everyone. Welcome to today's Employer Insights webinar, hosted by the University of Washington Professional and Continuing Education. My name is Joe Gubas, and I'm the Community and Corporate Relations uh, person for our unit, and I also oversee our scholarship programs. Uh, I think most of you are probably familiar with us, but those for those who aren't, um, my team at the University of Washington helps people keep learning, whether uh, full-time working or juggling families or living outside of the Seattle area. Uh, we have programs that are designed to fit around everything you have going on in your life. And um, we offer part-time certificate programs, boot camps, um, professional master's degrees and short courses in many high demand fields. And as many of our learners are building skills in order to be able to change careers or advance in their careers, we've created some resources to help you in your next steps. And this employer insights panel is part of a series of spotlights that we've been doing on leading employers over the last year or so. Uh, we've been um, uncovering uh, companies' values, culture and hiring approaches. And so far we've talked to companies like Microsoft and Amazon, uh, Expedia, T-Mobile, and uh, if you miss those, you can find recordings in the news and features section of our website. But today we're going to hear from our friends at Smartsheet. We are super excited to welcome uh, a team of recruiters and hiring managers. And uh, But before I welcome the panel, I just want to encourage you to add questions in the Q&A during the discussion and we'll get to those later in the session. If you have a question, you can um, check first to see if anyone else has asked it. And if they have, you can use the thumbs up uh, or like button to upvote it. And we will definitely uh, work on getting the most requested questions answered first. So with that, uh, I would like to introduce Chrissy Vaughan. Uh, Chrissy, can you put your camera on? Absolutely. Hi. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks, Joe. That was a great introduction. And hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, just run through a couple of slides and tell you about a little bit about who Smartsheet are, and then I'll introduce our panel for today. Well, I am going to leave you to it. I'm going to hand right. over. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, just a quick introduction about Smartsheet. And I always, um, before we um, share anything we have to flash up this legal slide that is that just talks about forward-looking information given we are a publicly traded company on the new york stock exchange so nothing we say today guarantees any future performance and um so with that out of the way i'll go ahead and talk about a little bit about who we are in case you don't um know smart sheet so we started in the pacific northwest about 15 years ago and our corporate headquarters are still in Bellevue. But since that time, we've grown to over 2,600 employees around the world. We've got seven global offices. And we're proud, though, that we've been able to maintain a strong award-winning culture of we've expand, as we've expanded. So you can see it, here are several great place to work awards. Um, recently this year, we won Best CEO for Women and Best Work-Life Balance from Comparably. And our Australia office also won a Best Place to Work Award within a year of opening. Um, this last year. So Smartsheet is a software platform for managing your work. Whatever you do, whether you're a multinational corporation or a small business, we're the app on your screen that brings together all the pieces of everything you and your team are doing. So you can manage everything in one place with one source of truth. Um, but we like to say we're more than a platform for working faster, better, more effectively. We um, provide technology and the culture that we've built at Smartsheet are all based on the idea that work matters. So we like to say we empower people and we magnify the impact and meaning of their projects and work. So um, we have grown through this time to have over 10 million people in over 190 countries using our product to make their work matter. And as a member of the Smartsheet team, whether you're marketing or selling, our platform, whether you're supporting the customers we have or writing code to create um, new innovations on the platform, you'd be increasing the dynamism, the effectiveness and the impact of everyone who uses our platform. So, um, you know, we're everywhere. If you've never heard of us, you likely will in the future. Um, you know, we're, we are in the trenches with COVID vaccine distribution, 
Um, we are helping the Climate Pledge Arena and Kraken launch their new brand, and we even helped NASA put the rover on Mars. So we're excited to talk to you more about what it's like to be a smart cheater and the path that might help you join us in the future. Uh, before I turn it over to the panel, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about our values, and then I'll have the panel talk a little bit more about how um, they see these play out in their roles and um, what they do day to day. But really, we have um, what we call the smart sheet way. And that is four values, and they're listed here. One is seizing opportunity, and that's getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, we know that if we're not continuously evolving and improving, we're falling behind. The second one is winning with integrity. So we love to win, but not at all costs. And I think that's really important that we, um, we acknowledge that we strive to act with honesty and transparency in everything we do. Um, we also prior prioritize the we before me. Teamwork is so important in our company culture, and really it's at the heart of our mission for what we're trying to bring to our customers as well. And then the last is pursuing project progress. So we believe deeply that better, fairer, and further is always possible. So we're always working toward how to empower not only individuals and business, but also um, being good citizens in society and helping um, you know, further, further, um, for their society's goals as well. So with that, I will um, introduce myself a little bit. I'm the Director of Public Relations at Smartsheet, and I actually am involved with the UW program. Um, I'm on the advisory board for the content and storytelling continuing education program. I was also a student myself mid-career. Um, I've had an untraditional career path and um, was proud to, to complete the editing certification. Um, a few many years ago, but it was a great program and I'm excited to be involved again. So um, Sarah, I'd love to pass the mic to you to introduce yourself. Can you hear me okay? Sorry, having of course technical difficulties. Yes, we can. No, we can. Hi, Sarah. Hi all, I'm Sarah Eldridge. Um, so I am one of our recruiters here on our growing recruiting team. I've been with Smartsheet now for just over three years. Uh, time has flown. And um, I have supported across various teams, but mainly working with our product and our UX organization at this point here and all of our hiring needs. And Sarah was the first face that I met at Smartsheet as well. She recruited me. So <laughs> great to have you here, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Alicia, if you could introduce yourself. Hello, I am very new to Smartsheet. I've only been here since um, October, so I'm very, very new. I partner with Sarah. We work on the same team, which is fantastic. She's been amazing to get me up to speed on all things Smartsheet. Um, I always support product and marketing. Um, new space for me, and historically, my background has been tech, um, but I'm absolutely loving it, and it's an amazing company. I'm super happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Alicia. Garvis, I'll ask you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Garvis Aikens. Uh, I've been at Smartsheet now for uh, about almost six years. I'll have a work anniversary here in about a month. So uh, it's been an exciting, incredible, wild ride. Um, I support uh, multiple teams here at Smartsheet uh, doing product development. Um, and yeah, excited to, to be here. I'm also kind of a, a non-traditionalist. So I'll tell you about more of that later. Awesome. Thanks. And last but very not least, Nate, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Nate. I, I work in data. I'm on our BI operations team. Um, I went to UW, so I'm, I'm local. I live a little north of Seattle now. So um, really, really love the university. Excited to talk. But um, I've been at Smartsheet four and a half years now. The employee count was underneath 600 when I joined. Not quite as small as Garvis, but um, certainly um, seen, seen the growth here and seen the maturity of the data team. So I'm excited to share a bit about that and what a data career looks like. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop sharing so we can get a better view of our panelists. And then I'll just kind of launch into some questions and then we'll leave time at the end for those of you who are listening to ask your questions as well. So um, getting started, Nate, I'm gonna start with you just because you just talked about your um, your path from UW and the fact that you've been at Smartsheet a long time. Can you tell us a little bit about your career path? Um, what led you to Smartsheet, your current role, you know, anything you learned along the way or, you know, I don't know, maybe did differently and would have done differently in hindsight. Yeah, I'll give like the, the two minute summary. So. At UW, I studied, uh, I got a dual degree in, in economics and international studies. I was actually working to um, go live abroad. I did internships abroad, was going to go work in international economic development in developing countries is what I studied. 
um, learn Spanish. Like I, I did the whole rigmarole um, and that kind of fell through um, a couple of years after graduating. So I was sitting in a customer support job, wasn't really sure what kind of career I wanted. Figured out data as a thing. I was doing it kind of by accident. What I've learned is you can do data in almost any job. And that's typically how we pivot into that career. Almost anyone in data will talk about some random place they were in to get into data. So um, I eventually found a company up here in Everett to, to take a chance on me um, after you know doing some data projects. At, at, I was at Rosetta Stone, did some stuff there. And then a company called Funko, if you know the Funko Pops, the collectible um, figurines. So I, I found myself as the first data person there and it was totally, it was crazy getting thrown to the deep end of a swimming pool essentially. Um, so I, I learned how to get, how, you know, there's a lot of tough pieces about being a data analyst and, and working in databases. Um, so really cut my teeth at Funko and then came to Smartsheet pretty shortly after that. Um, focusing both in the analytics side, so you know, getting dashboards and reports out to stakeholders across Smartsheet and in other companies. Um, and I've now pivoted into something new called analytics engineering, which um, is a new piece of the career, which is making data clean and nice for people to use. Um, surprisingly, you can make a career out of just making data very clean. So I um, found myself there in the last year or so, and that's where I am now. I love it. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pop around a little bit. Sarah, how about you? Tell us a little bit about your career path and what got you to Smartsheet. Yeah, definitely. So I actually started my career in uh, customer service uh, with a healthcare company. And so kind of, you know, grew up in the ranks there for a year before landing into an agency um, role where I was supporting various recruiting efforts for a lot of the local companies. So I am local here as well um, and supporting roles across like Microsoft and Amazon. And then an opportunity came up at Smartsheet and with the growth that the company was having, with it being a local company that had a lot of you know, growth opportunities ahead of them, I applied and have been here for the last three years and have loved every chaotic second of it. And I'm sure Garvis can speak to his growth here and seeing it. But I think when I joined, I was eight, employee 800 and something, and we have now over 2,600 individuals across you know, global locations now. So it's been really exciting um, and fun and challenging at the same time. Awesome. That's a good segue to you, Garvis. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mine's kind of been a long winding path actually to get here. I uh, did pre-med coming out of high school at uh, there at UW, um, got a little disillusioned with it in the process. I sort of realized, wait a second, this isn't actually uh, what I want to do with my life. Um, ended up in construction, um, doing a bunch of sort of uh, cabinetry work and, and whatnot, made my way into sales, uh, realized that was not really for me either. I'm sort of a builder at heart. Um, so found my way back into construction and uh, ended up going back to UW again, uh, this time for computer science. Um, and, you know, long story short, I've hopped around uh, taking an internship, coming straight out of it, got in with a, a startup um, and found my way to, to Smartsheet. Um, like I said, I started about six years ago. I was employee 201. Um, our entire engineering team is about the size of one of my teams uh, right now, um, which has been kind of an insane thing to, to watch. Uh, I think we have four or 500 now um, kind of in the engineering org. So it is completely, completely different than it was back then. Um, but I think for myself, like, you know, one of the things that's held true the whole time is just seizing every opportunity that's kind of out in front of me, whether it's you know, going through uh, the, the jobs I had in construction, you know, taking on some sales opportunities and trying that out, um, but just seizing the opportunities that I see in front of me and, and, and making the best of it. So that's great. I love that. The rest is history. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Alicia, do you want to quickly? I mean, you haven't been here long, but you want to quickly <laughs> tell us how you found yeah. us? My winding path, um, I fell into recruiting, literally fell into it, um, was a house cleaner before. Um, had done a lot of different jobs, retail, admin, assistant work, all sorts of stuff, and found this role. And it's been a career path that I've been on for probably the last 18 years. Absolutely love it. Worked for a lot of large companies in the area. I'm based um, in the Seattle area, about an hour outside of Seattle. And I absolutely love it. Um, I love the energy and the, and the culture that um, Smartsheet has offered and has definitely lived up to in my short amount of time here. And I'm definitely looking forward to a very long career here. Love it. Thanks. So let's, um, Garvis and Nate, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about sort of your day to day. What are the, what are the pain points that you're solving for our customers? What are the challenges that you're working on? Nate, you talked about clean data. So maybe you want to unpack that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I will. So uh, much like many growing companies, you just heard kind of the growth path that Smartsheet's on. 
Um, there's a lot of demand for data. Um, this company, especially, I've been at some where data wasn't that important, but certainly at Smartsheet, everybody wants to make good decisions and those typically require having something to support that decision. So our, while my stakeholders are, are internal, right? I, I'm rarely on a customer call. Uh, the, the point that the work that we do goes out to customers. It's the data that the customers see, whether it's in the app when they load it up, it's in dashboards that our sales and customer support reps show them just to talk about what value smart is bringing to them, that kind of thing. So, uh, we, we have a lot of work to get data prepped for all of those folks. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of time to understand all of our ecosystem. We have data coming in from all sorts of places and understanding how our customers are using our application, um, and really to make recommendations of what can you use differently. Um, so, so yeah, a lot of the, the day to day for, for my team is um, taking a lot of these kind of disparate pieces where if someone comes in, and they want to find data. It's very, it, it, sometimes it's not easy to find. Like it's, you have to know someone to talk to who knows about this one place where that piece of data is. You're not kind of handed data sets very easily. So my job is to, is to try to make that a lot easier for folks so that we're safe. There's less people trying to find data and more people taking action, giving information to our customers and, and really moving the company and, and everything forward is, is where we're focused. Great. Thank you. Garvis, what about you? What does your day-to-day -day look like? What are, what challenges are you working on? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, uh, my teams are absolutely focused on, you know, how do you take a really generic platform like Smartsheet that's applicable to all different verticals, whether you're in the marketing uh, part of a company or you're in HR, you're in, you know, the, the product engineering side of the house. Um, and how do you make it so that, you know, you can, bring that to each one of those phases and, and, and make it so it's easily uh, to get in, uh, build what you need to, um, and produce the value that you're looking for. You know, we talk about going from zero to hero, right? A lot of people come in and they start using Smartsheet because they're trying to solve a problem. And, and we want to make them the hero as quickly as possible so that they can take this back and use it within their business. But I think for myself, one of the the day-to-day uh, -day aspects that I'm extremely excited about uh, being a part of is, is actually career growth. Um, you know, in a lot of places, uh, career growth is really about, you know, how much does my boss like me? Um, you know, do, do, they, do they like me enough where I'm going to get a promotion and a raise? And, you know, that's a, that's a problem for us. Uh, we don't operate like that. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that, that, you know, it's not a buddy-buddy type system. Um, but instead is a place where, you know, we're, we're looking at the characteristics of the people um, and uh, the value that they're bringing to the company as a whole. And so, you know, one of the first things that we went in and tackled was getting a really clear role guide put together. Um, and it's not based on uh, quantitative uh, characteristics about lines of code that you've written or bugs that you've, uh, you know, addressed, but it's really uh, qualitative based. Uh, clear behavior-based um, assessments of, you know, what is this person doing? How do they behave? Um, they line up with our core values in, in, in almost every single case. And then from there, taking it and looking at it and saying like, hey, this isn't just something that we drop into somebody's lap, but how do we make this a partnership between the manager and the employees so that together they're on a path to, um, path of pursuit, right? Of where that employee wants to go, where they want to take their career and like, how do we help them get there? So I think for myself, that has been one of the most rewarding things that I've been involved in um, here at Smartsheet. And um, I think it's something that we've seen the fruits of as our, our culture uh, emanates from the bottom up. It's not a whole bunch of process that we push down on our employees. We, you know, sort of self-define this out of the culture that, that, are, that is Smartsheet. Um, and so in doing so, we we're able to have employees that, that, you know, love being a part of it and put their all into it. That's great. I can attest to that too. I've, I've been at Smartsheet less than a year and I've seen lots of people come up with ideas, create their own roles, move on to different parts of the business. And um, that's super exciting. So Garvis, um, I'm going to go back to you real quick because you mentioned something in your answer about um, the Smartsheet values. So yeah. um, I kind of talked through what those were, but I'd love to hear from you on how do you see those values show up in your work? Um, you talked a little bit about that right now, but can you expand on that just a little bit more? A absolutely. Um, and it's an evolving process. So like we actually just went back and, and revisited our core values to make them, uh, make them more descriptive um, and help us get better clarity on exactly uh, what we're looking at. And the, kind of the one that pops out for me all the time, and maybe it's because I like saying it, is prioritizing the we before me. Um, it's we work together as one team in service of our mission and celebrate the big and the small successes of each other and our customers along the way. For myself, this really resonates, um, and even for our teams, because 
building software is not a sort of solo sport. Uh, it's very much a team sport. And so, you know, if, if the team is really looking out only for themselves or the teams or the disciplines, um, it just doesn't really work very well. Uh, we really drive forward on this idea of alignment, not permission. Um, and, you know, these really dovetail together. Alignment is really a group activity of people coming together, uh, understanding what is our objective, what do we want to do, getting alignment and going and addressing it. Um, permission's not. Permission's a very sort of uh, self-centered uh, activity. It's about me getting the way what I want and I'm convincing you that my way is the best way and that that's what we should go do. And so there's a lot of wasted effort there. You know, if you get a, if, if the answer is no, you spend a lot of time, okay, how do I convince you about what I need to go do? And so for me, I think the, the we bef uh, before me is, is a piece that um, sort of emanates from necessity and really just how we work to, to go solve the customer problems. Awesome. Thanks. That's a great example. Nate, what about you? What, how are the values showing up in your work and how are they impacting the decisions you make? Yeah. And, and each one of them has kind of an application. I think the one that, that resonates the most with me is the seizing opportunity one. So the team that I'm on now is funny. Um, the, the data team has all sorts of roles. You might've heard of data analysts and data scientists and data engineers. There's different roles on it. Well, we're a brand new team as of a year ago, um, which is called analytics engineering which is a new role, but we turned out we were doing, myself and one of the other data analysts were kind of, we were taking the data and turning it into tables that everyone else could use. We we're making very useful solutions for all data workers at Smartsheet. And so what happened was um, my manager um, uh, came to us and said, hey, or we were saying, we, we, this is a new role. Like we should, this is something we should think about. Like this is an opportunity for us to make everybody faster. Like instead of having everyone work on everything in their own place, what if we dedicated ourselves to making everybody better and, and quicker at their job? And so um, we saw that opportunity and, and in this case it was seizing it and forming our own squad. That's really, I think now paying off. It's, it's taken, a, you know, it's a bit of time to spin up your team and get momentum going around it. And we're really seeing that now. Um, but I think that's that's the piece here at Smartsheet that there's there's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, if you kind of, this is a lesson I learned, frankly, really early in, in my career, where one of my managers challenged me and said, um, using a baseball analogy, he said, you're there and you're batting, you're waiting for people, you're waiting to react to everybody, you should be the pitcher, go make things happen, like you need to be the one starting pieces. And that's one of the most key pieces of advice I've seen. And um, I see people at Smartsheet who do really well, um, are ones who see opportunity and seize it um, and make sure there's alignment, right? As Garvin said, there's, there needs to be some alignment with, with what the company is doing. But as long as you align there, I think there's a lot of opportunity that you could seize and um, that, that really helps. Yeah. I love that. I love that, Nate. Um, switching a little bit, but still kind of along the same lines of, of culture and, um, and we before me as well. Sarah and Alicia, can you talk a little bit about how Smartsheet is focused on um, having a diverse and inclusive um, culture, work environment, and also, you know, our candidate pipeline and how we're ensuring, ensuring that. Yeah, definitely. I can jump in here first. Um, right. We definitely kind of double clicking on that seizing the opportunity as well, like continuing to evolve processes and evaluate our programs and then, you know, grow and improve on those. We've evaluated and continue to evaluate a lot of our internal processes from interviewing to how we conduct interviewing to what Garvis was mentioning with role guides. How are we promoting from within? Is it very clear as what that ladder looks like and what that structure is? Uh, we're also investing in a lot of new DEI programs and trainings to continue to evolve our processes overall. And then looking at those additional like DEI, DEI excuse me, partnerships too. Where can we continue to partner to grow our diverse candidate pipeline to ensure that we're keeping uh, outside or other communities in the loop here as far as we partner with Dash Ada, out in tech, uh, Latinas in tech, women in tech, UW obviously as well. So continuing to evaluate our partnerships and look for those opportunities to grow to ensure that we are really building out our diverse uh, employee base across all of our departments here. That's great, thanks. Alicia, um, do you want, do you have anything to chime in there? If, if not, I would love to hear from you guys about the hiring process too. Yeah. I would add that I believe that from my perspective and I'm not going to lie, I probably still have a little bit of the rose colored glasses on, but I really <laughs> truly believe the smart sheet is going to walk the walk. They're not just talking it. They're actually going to live it, execute. They're open to feedback. They're willing to look at 
different areas. They're willing to take on different challenges and tackle different things that most people in the industry aren't willing to touch and talk about. And I think the openness and the authenticity that they are bringing into the DEI space is huge. And I'm really excited to just see how we continue to expand and grow on what we already have. That's awesome. Great to hear. Um, what about the hiring process? What does it look like at Smartsheet? How is it, you know, how have we evolved it? Sarah, you said there's been internal processes that we've been evaluating. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it depends on each team. Like every department has different hiring process. Overall, some will include presentations or technical interviews, um, behavioral-based interviews as well, one-on-ones with different cross-functional team members. What we're really striving to build is ensuring that we're building as unbiased of a recruiting process as possible and as fair and consistent as possible. So behind the scenes, building a competency-based interviewing so that we're aligning to our core values, to our core mission, to our core competencies as a company, and ensuring that we're interviewing each candidate um, in that fair and unbiased way. And so typically our process would be a recruiter screen, hiring manager interview, Garvis and Nate can probably share more on like the technical interviews of what is conducted in the data and engineering departments. And then kind of a final loop round where you'll have a chance to meet with some of the key cross-functional individuals that you would be working with in that specific team or role. And right. all of our interviews as well, if not already assumed at this point, we're conducting everything remotely. So we'll set up all the interviews through Zoom, can break things out across different days and times and just try to be as flexible as possible here on our side. And Sarah, I, at least from my experience, um, I do know that you know we're based in Bellevue. We have offices, a few, you know, we're in. Boston and Denver, we've got offices in, in London and Sydney and Edinburgh, but um, can you talk about a little bit of like how we're sourcing candidates in terms of like, does it matter where you live? You know, a little bit more on that. Yeah, definitely. We are really opening the door and have always had flexibility, but in this new environment that we're in, definitely looking to hire um, globally. Uh, there are some dependencies on the team of if it needs to be a US-based role or if it can be um, an uh, you know, outside country role, but those are really the limitations. We are expanding our searches and our recruiting uh, to break out across all of any location globally that you can think of, not just our current headquarters. Great. Garvis, Nate, did you have anything to add in terms of specific um, you know, interview process for your teams? I know things can change a little bit on the, the more technical side of the house. Go ahead, I can speak to, yeah, yeah, I'll speak really quickly. At least for the for data teams, this is interesting. Um, I've interviewed at various data roles over the years, and it's funny. Most folks think of it as a technical role. Um, data engineering, perhaps, is. But what's what's interesting in the data world is collectively we've figured out that really good data workers aren't necessarily technical. There's some pieces to it. There's some you use language called SQL to to talk to a database. Um, not the hardest language to learn, frankly. Um, and I think we've, we've slowly learned that screening for technical ability um, misses out on some really, really good candidates who just haven't had a chance to necessarily use a language um, like, like SQL. So focusing, it's funny, interview loops have now become much less, let's get you screen technically, let's give you an assignment, make sure you can really you know, like execute on some kind of data analysis. And it's much more, are you curious? Do you ask lots and lots of questions? Um, do you, you know, do you bring some really interesting background to, to questions or a different perspective the team doesn't have um, trying to bring in some of that? So um, at least with our interviews, it's actually changed. I've seen it even change over the last few years um, as we realize that the, the real kind of value is finding really curious, interested, um, smart people. Um, so that's, that's at least one change I've seen on, on our interview side. Garvis, anything else to add on that front? Yeah, I just kind of like to second that. I mean, you know, it's been an ever evolving, changing world. Um, you know, when I first got started, the, the technical, the interviews were extremely technical. You went in and whiteboarded for, you know, three, four hours and that was it. Um, now that's not the case. You know, now we're looking at uh, a lot of different a aspects, you know, as, you know we, we interview against our core values. Does this person match up with the, the culture that's at Smartsheet? Um, you know, for us, it's very, very important to make sure that we're hiring individuals that will help continue that culture and, and help demonstrate that in, in their day to day behavior. Um, and so for us, that's one of the key aspects of it, um, not just, you know, can you write some code? Can you put a design together? I think there's for us, there's also been an interesting uh, piece that's been now sort of dropped in our lap, which is how do you do all of the traditional whiteboarding activities um, online? Um, how do you do design? You know, um, there's definitely some awesome tools that allow us to do you know, coding exercises, um, which I think is even easier now. 
uh, than it was when you had a whiteboard because you had to sort of remember the pieces and most of the tools are actually um, matching with the languages. Um, but there's definitely a lot of pieces of how do we kind of adapt and adjust to to this new world where um, you know people are working from home and and we're you know for the most part a remote by default uh, engineering org uh, where people work from from where they are. So uh, you know to be continued. Uh, I think it's an ever evolving process. We always want to get to the to a better place, right? It's uh, you know one of our core values, and so uh, we try to do it at, at, at every aspect. Great, awesome. Um, I'd love to go a little bit deeper on the, the untraditional career path discussion, because I know a lot of, at least from my experience working with the, the UW Continuing Education Program, there's a lot of students who are coming in and potentially um, kind of using it as a skills boot camp to pivot in their career. So um, I'd actually like to hear from our hiring managers and our recruiters both, because I think there's there's aspects of, you know, Nate and Garvis, what you're experiencing from people on your team or potentially that you're looking to hire. But then Sarah, I think, and, and Alicia, what you're seeing from the candidate pool and what makes people stand out and how they can be successful and um, how they're applying if they might be, quote unquote, an untraditional candidate. And I've been in that role myself. So I definitely, you know, can put myself in those shoes. So um uh, Garvis, let's start with you um, on that front. I know it's, it sounds like you yourself had an untraditional path, but how have you seen people, you know, be successful, especially when they're kind of trying to get their foot in the door at Smartsheet? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I myself started out with an untraditional uh, kind of path to get here. Um, you know, I went back in and got a comp sci degree at UW. Um, and the, for myself, the first thing I did was just took whatever opportunity came my way. Um, you know, it's about, in many cases, getting the experience um, that'll get you to where that's where you want to go. And, and I can definitely say where I thought I was headed is not where I end up, ended up. Um, so getting that started and, and understanding what the landscape looks like and going over those. I think uh, for myself, I've had multiple um, uh, people on my teams that have had an untraditional path as well. Um, I had a uh, um, a, a lady who was a structural engineer um, prior to this uh, worked on uh, airplanes actually um, went back got a certificate at UW um, and is actually one of the top performers on on one of my teams now um, and I think the the key piece is that you know she emanates all over the place is, is very much the the curiosity mindset of um, hey, I want to learn more. Um, you know, collaborative this is incredibly important. Um, and really, you know, it's this idea of like, I don't do this alone. You know, she is somebody who comes in uh, to every single activity and is excited to work with other people and learn from them and, um, and, and sees those opportunities. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people are worried about, uh, you know, what others are going to think about them or that, you know, they might not succeed at every step. Um, but really, you know, seizing opportunity isn't about succeeding at every step. It's about taking every opportunity um, and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, you know, if we're not continually evolving and improving, um, we're never going to get to where we want to. And that only typically comes in, you know, successes and failures. Um, and so I think those are the things that I see uh, coming out of those, uh, those individuals who have the non-traditional path. They are, you know, trying everything out and they're, they're succeeding, um, you know, as much as they're failing in many cases, but that's how they got to where they are. That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Alicia, I'm going to ask you to, to chime in here, knowing that you're newer, but it sounds like you also had an untraditional path to get here. Can you talk a little bit more um, either about your own story or what you're seeing so far from Smartsheet in terms of, you know, people getting in the door and how they can best sell themselves? Yeah, fair enough. I think for me, I started out, um, graduated from high school, went into college for like half a minute and thought, I have no freaking clue what I want to do. So I'm out and went and just got a job, went out into the workforce, bounced around, did a lot of different things and then uh, fell into recruiting, literally fell into it. And I've loved it. Like it is a thing that like people ask me, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I'm in my job. I love it. It's great. It's amazing. Um, a few years ago, I went back to school and actually finished my degree. I am graduated um, in 2020, and it was a huge accomplishment for me. I was super happy to do it. Um, stayed in the same space, just wanted to kind of expand my knowledge and, and kind of check a box for myself. Um, but as far as like trying something different and, and going into a different career path, I think the big thing from my perspective is 
being willing to one, save us all of the opportunities. And the opportunity might be that you have a lot of industry experience, but not a lot of experience in the space that you wanna go into. And you might need to go backwards to go forwards. And it's really okay to do that if you're comfortable with taking that opportunity and taking advantage of that. And so if you don't have industry experience in the spaces that you're applying to, but you've got the education or the certificate or whatever, look for the, the roles that have the zero to two years of experience listed in the job description. That's the way you're going to get your foot in the door, even though you have a resume that's got, you know, five or 10 years of experience in a specific specific area, you might want to kind of open that up. And the other thing is, is at the top of your resume, talk about, I have a lot of experience, but I don't have experience in this space, but this is where I want to be and what I want to do. And this is the reason why I want to be there. I want to talk to people like that. And I would rather give, have that knowledge and that information when I'm looking at a resume that that's going to get through the gateway to get to a manager that they're going to say, oh my goodness, this person's amazing. And they're curious and they want to try something different. I want to talk to you. I want to get on the phone and I want to learn about your experience and your background. And so for me, when I see that, that gets me super pumped up and excited. Awesome. Thank you. Sarah, anything else to add? I would double down on that, you know, be honest and open with the skills that you have, with the experience that you have, but highlight why you're trying to make that transition, what relatable skills that you have or how your, you know, current or previous experience can translate into that. And, um, you know, really just build out your resume with professional accomplish accomplishments, excuse me, use data metrics to kind of highlight this is the successes you have had that could translate into this role you're applying for. Great. Nate, anything else to add from your experience? Yeah, no, I'll this, at least from a, from a data perspective, for those curious in that part of the world, um, slightly different than a little bit of the advice here. So in data, the superpower, I mentioned this a bit earlier, isn't how skilled you are at languages and technical ability or even a visualization tool. The superpower for many people is their, their knowledge of an industry or a domain. I'm good at sales. I'm good at finance. I'm good at marketing. I have you know some years of experience in that. Really good analysts. I should say analysts only become good when they have great domain knowledge. That's really where an analyst goes from being kind of average to being great. So um, a, a lot of the kind of superpower that many of you have, especially I see in the, in the chat some experience um, in various industries, really leverage that. That's the key piece that separates you from a lot of kind of other data aspirational folks who are coming straight out of university potentially. Um, there's options certainly for folks who are coming straight out, but um, a lot of the 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 challenge of data is that essentially everyone's from a background that's not necessarily starting in data. Um, the, the piece I'll caution you is if you look up advice and say, how do I get into data science, data analytics, the advice on the internet is go and work on various projects just online, kind of one-off things. And I think that's not necessarily the best way to go. I think that's actually pretty bad advice. Hiring managers, I don't think necessarily value that. Um, really where most of us come in is get a job that um, that is in your industry that you know, and Take that data knowledge you have now, so whatever kind of experience or kind of drive you have to do that and apply. I guarantee there's data problems in whatever job that is, in a finance job, in a marketing job, in an operations job. In, I came from sales CS. Yes. So in sales, guarantee there's data needs there. So um, the, the advice really is to um, not narrow to, I need to find a data job with data in the title. It's really almost everyone that I know is in it started um, you know, got some industry experience and worked up from there in a role that was unrelated. You can find data work really anywhere. There's, there's a lot of demand for it. Awesome. Thanks. We've got one more minute, Sarah. I'm going to pop a bonus question to you. When a candidate asks you what makes Smartsheet unique and different, how do you answer? That's a great question. I always default to the people. I love our collaborative and supportive environment. I get to work across different departments with different people who are truly supportive, who want to partner together, who want to help us continue to build and scale Smartsheet in the best way possible. So for me, in my interview process, in my three years of being here, it's the people like you, Chrissy, I will say, <laughs> uh, who really keep me excited and I'm really loving working here overall. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I think that's our time for the um, the set Q and A that I have. Joe, I'd love you to kind of let us know yeah. what's going on in the chat and what what we could help answer. Well, I found the conversation super interesting so far, and really interesting to hear all about your backgrounds and how you totally don't think any of you come through like your a traditional route. And uh, so that's a really great to to hear. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and I think that you can see from the questions in the chat that a lot of people have sort of questions on a similar theme, like uh, the person who was voted to the top 
um, any recommendations for trying to find the most applicable roles within your openings. So I think it's, you know, like any suggestions on the recruiter's side for navigating the, um, the job site to, you know, how to, you know, uncover something that might be a good fit for you. Definitely. I think, I mean, there's different ways and we're continuing to evolve the career site in general, but searching by location, if you're looking for a field position or a certain, you know, uh, location that you can actually break it down to by certain departments as well that you can look at. And so you can break it down by each department if you're interested in the finance or data. But to Nate's point too, there might be a role that not specifically within a certain area that could align there too. So all of our positions are posted on LinkedIn as well as Glassdoor. So you can search for the new positions there as well that could align. That might not be in a specific you know, job uh, family that you thought of or a department that you specifically were looking for. Yeah, so just really need to spend some time on that site, kind of looking through in, in more detail. Mm -hmm. do, you, um, do you find that people reach out for informational meetings like do you have a lot of do a lot of people from Smartsheet get pinged on LinkedIn for informationals um yeah feel free to jump in <laughs> anyone <laughs> I do and I when I was looking to be a candidate at Smartsheet I also reached out to people in my network for informational interviews and absolutely I've I've done a lot of that Garvis Nate I or Nate I see you saying yes with your head so absolutely yeah, I think that's that's one of the things that I noticed too. And in, in you know, for on the engineering side, uh, each team is solving you know slightly different problems and focused at different customer areas. Um, but we're not going to post up you know five thousand different unique um, <clears throat> uh, job postings. And so we kind of go for the the middle of the road. So I think one of the key pieces is maybe not trying to find the exact one that has the you know perfect language that matches everything uh, that you have to offer, but really um, starting that conversation, you know, getting uh, a, a, a resume submitted into that, having a conversation with the recruiter where they can help you um, find out that space and, and the managers to talk to you and, um, you know, really getting that conversation going is probably a, a key piece as well. So just building on that, sorry, I know this is slightly off the list of questions, but um, do is the recruiter uh, on, I'm thinking about on LinkedIn, is if they search on Smartsheet and recruiters and get some uh, names coming up, um, would a strategy be to um, try and identify a recruiter that's sort of working in the category that, that you're in and then to send a, a personal message and, uh, you know, kind of connect that way? Do your recruiters like to work like that, or is there a better way? And I'll just say it depends. Um, I'll be honest, I don't go into uh, LinkedIn all that often from a personal perspective to look at who's reached out to me. I'll get, I'll be honest, I get a ton of spam. Apparently, I want some people want to date me and things like that, which is from other countries. I'm not really interested in that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so for me, that's not a space that I tend to go to quite often. Um, as far as like reaching out and trying to connect to people, because I'm going to the recruiter side of it, I'm actually going and sourcing and trying to find candidates because my time is very limited from that perspective. Um, you can always attempt to do it because you might get a snowball's chance in Florida when I clicked on and actually went through and I read something and all of that. But I'll just be totally honest. It's not a space that I tend to, to spend a lot of time in. Um, so it might be a little bit more challenging. Probably the best way is to find the role that's really aligns. And I would say, speaking to Garvis's point, if there's a little bit of interest and you feel that you've got a few of the things that align from a skills perspective, apply to the position. I'd rather look at you and say, ooh, there might be a match here. And I'd rather spend some time actually chatting with you, even if it's not a perfect match, um, than for you to not apply and potentially miss out on an opportunity. Because I might be able to share you out with another person on my team or with a different person in the organization that has a role that aligns better and things along those lines. So it's better for you to actually just send out your resume. If you want to spend a few minutes, you're going to get my attention if you change the top of it just to say, hey, this is the reason why I applied to this role. I'm really interested in X, Y, and Z. That's going to set the tone for the conversation as well. So those would just be some things from my perspective. Feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I just don't know, especially if you connect with me. I don't know how far you'll get it very quickly. So. That's super helpful. Um, 
So next question, and there are a couple of these around um, the remote uh, remote working and whether you're being, you know, whether the roles that are based in a particular location like Bellevue, for instance, are you, do you really still want to just recruit people who live within a driving distance of Bellevue or are, how do you manage the thing of um, remote positions? It is, you, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. It is role dependent. There are teams where they do still have preferences of being in certain locations or time zones. So definitely, as you're talking to the recruiter or looking at those roles, you can dive in deeper in those areas. But for the most part, across the majority of our company and departments, we are remote friendly and most positions are remote eligible, where you might be working with a team that's mainly based in our Bellevue headquarters, but that doesn't mean that you need to be on site in Bellevue. So we're trying to take it a very flexible and adaptable approach to each need, each team and department. So it can vary, but we are very much open to remote um, uh, employment, 100% uh, moving forward. And I, I would add to our offices are open officially. And so, um, you know, it's fun. They've been, uh, our HR teams have been, people and culture team has been creating some fun office environments just to, you know, I think we do all um, need some human connection at some point. And um, there's times where it's great to come together. And then there's times where focus time at home is, is what you need for your job. And what I appreciate is that um, I would say the last two years, the company has evolved from that point of view. Um, and understanding that really great work can happen remotely. Um, but there's times like we are having our, our sales team all come together from around the world for our sales kickoff event at the beginning of March. People can dial in remotely if they've chose to, but they actually pulled the whole sales group and a majority of them wanted to be in person. So they're having a big in-person event. They're even getting hotel rooms for people that live outside of the 10 mile radius of that because they wanted them to be able to, you know, have that time with the team. So um, I appreciate the flexibility. And um, so offices are open where, you know, my marketing organization says, you know, if, we, if you do go in try to do it on a Thursday when there's more people there and we'll all kind of, you know, be there together, go to lunch, you know, have some brainstorm sessions, that kind of thing in person. So, yeah. Very cool. Great. So um, going back to the list, there are some questions about um, internships and um, positions for new grads, um, entry level roles. Um, what about what about that? Uh, I think that you have some uh, some internships and I was curious to know, like, are they really um, specifically designed for students who are still in their degrees or do you consider people who are recent graduates? Uh, we don't have a Lauren Hauk who leads our internship program on today so I'm not going to be a hundred percent I think the best person for this we can absolutely follow up on that we do have an internship program we I think this year it was 40 to 50 internship slots across different departments and teams at Smartsheet so it's definitely something that we're continuing to build and grow I'm just not sure honestly on the um uh, the a or this uh, stage in school where they need to be and what's eligible or not so I'm so sorry but I can follow up after yeah, I, I participate pretty heavily in, in that. <clears throat> and I can definitely say that, you know, we try our best to do open as many internships as we can support. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that the individual that's coming in um, is supported uh, as they're going through their internship. Um, from the, you know, kind of engineering side of the house, these are paid internships. And our absolute goal is that this transitions into a full time role. Um, you know, whether you have another year left of school, or you're just finished, or maybe even you're a year or two out and, and trying to get that foot in the door, or maybe this is the second place you're interning at, um, absolutely are looking for people who, uh, um, you know, emanate our core values and, and match up with uh, what we're looking for. Um, and then from there, yeah, we're looking to turn, turn that into a full-time employment opportunity. That's great. And just to add on to that as well, to confirm all of our internship uh, positions are uh, paid interns. Mm. Awesome. That is good to hear. Um, what about, um, someone asked a question about marketing roles. Um, do you need to have some tech background for marketing roles at Smartsheet? Alicia, do you wanna take that one? I know that's your new area, but I know Sarah, you've worked in that space too, so. 
Sure. Um, I honestly, I haven't seen a lot. Like, I'll see one-offs that tend to. There might be something that's related. Like, if they're going to be marketing something specific for doing development within engineering or something like that, or they need to create content around that. Um, but for the most part, you just need a really strong SaaS background or understanding within an industry. Like, oddly enough, I have a um, marketing role that I'm looking for. That we need somebody with finance background, a really deep understanding of finance or healthcare or um, higher education um, or construction, oddly enough, because those are some verticals that we're planning on going into. And so not necessarily tech. So if you've got a different background, definitely mm -hmm. check out what we offer because um, our a lot of our product marketing roles specifically, you know, we just want somebody who's really passionate about marketing, can really communicate well, tell a really good story and understands how to um, reach their target audience. So That's great. Um, there seem to be a couple of people asking about product um, and product teams. Uh, Jalen's question, how do you collaborate with other teams on customer solution when every team's trying to get their own solutions and products executed? Like, how do you manage that process? Maybe, uh, Nate, you haven't spoken up for a while. How, how do the different teams interact with one another, given that everyone's got their own deliverables and priorities? Yeah, I can certainly speak to that from the data side and, you know, not less from the product, but certainly from on data teams, we're unique in that we interact with everyone across the company. Um, everyone needs data and we have a central kind of data team. So there's lots of conflict and, and priorities around like, well, who, like, what things should we work on? Who does this impact? What are the decisions we should make around it? Um, and, and a lot of it really comes down to judging what the business value of it will be. Like, is there, is there a way we can, we're data people, right? So we're trying to quantify, is there a way we can quantify time savings is a way we can quantify like will this help customers you know buy products a little easier or have something they really want so um, like the product team might be looking at different um, features they want to roll out well can we get some metrics around our ones do ones seem to have more momentum behind them if there's kind of an experiment going around them so um, for us really it's, it's trying to find some way to measure um, the impact of a decision and if we can't do that then really it's you know us offering some data to teams and and doing what we can to prioritize across what you know we then judge as, as being high value across the company. Uh, but I think that's really kind of where the focus is for us. And we use Smartsheet. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> our, our platform is, is intended to break down silos and help with, with cross team and cross enterprise collaboration. Mm -hmm. So we do walk our talk. We actually mm -hmm. have a company um, objective this year too, or I think it might be a marketing team object of, of Smartsheet on Smartsheet to become our own best customer from a, from a marketing perspective, because that's a big audience that we're trying to market to. So um, it is it is a tool that is awesome for that. Yeah, I use it too. Great. So um, <laughs> we have a couple of questions, just a couple time for maybe two more questions. There was one about cover letters, um, especially for people who are career transitioning. And then Sylvia's uh, question about like, the application process and perhaps how to break through into an interview like there's a I'm assuming there's an online application do you have a place to upload a cover letter and if you do do you really look at it and um how much weight do you put on it and then um you know like how do you shortlist the people and screen for people to be able to get through to the um the sort of next round Sarah, you have to say you read my cover letter, so I'm going to let you answer this question. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> cover letters are, are typically not required. Um, if you do submit a cover letter, there is absolutely a spot to do so in your application um, submittal. If you do uh, submit one, we will read it. And I recommend it if it can add additional insight into why you're applying for a role, if it can highlight what that career transition is, kind of what Alicia was sharing earlier and just what you put on as to why you're applying for this and why you're interested in this role. If you can add additional details that might not clearly reflect based on your previous experience, I could th I think it could be a huge benefit there. And we will very much read every cover letter that comes through with your resume, but it is not required. So if you don't submit it, that doesn't mean that you're automatically not reviewed. Um, I think it can just be dependent on you know how your resume reads, what experience you have, and then what you're trying to get into here. That might just be my opinion, but that's how I, I see that going. I know cover letters can be that sticky uh, topic, but yeah. That's helpful. Um, okay, Sean's question about his particular situation, lots and lots of years doing uh, as a product, project and quality co uh, control coordinator working in UX. Um, 
do you have any thoughts on the kinds of roles that might be a good fit? I think that's a very specific question. And if you don't want to get into that, that's totally fine. But if anyone feels like they want to jump in. I can add a quick piece because I support our UX hiring. Uh, we actually are building out a UX team specifically within our customer experience in UX. So someone who's had that exposure has worked within the UX environment, but looking for more of a project or program management role, we could definitely have a fit in there. We also have a kind of project managers or, or product operations uh, positions as well within our larger product board that will collaborate with UX, but kind of manage programs and processes for the larger engineering and product org um, as well. So we definitely could have opportunities that align there. Wonderful. Well, I think we really have unfortunately got to the end of our question time, but I just want to see if there's anything that any would, anyone would like to add, anyone has any comments or thoughts or um, last suggestions for our audience thinking about your experience at Smartsheet? I would just add that we have obviously had explosive growth as far as employees in the last year, and um, we are planning to do the same in the coming year. So, um, you know, we're excited for the opportunity to talk about Smartsheet because we're growing and we want great people to join us. So, Hopefully um, everybody's been able to hear the passion and um, excitement that we have for our individual roles, but then also, you know, the work we're doing together. And um, so we're excited to hear from you and um, feel yeah. free to at least, you know, hit, follow me on LinkedIn or, or send me a message if you have a specific question that we couldn't answer. Um, and I'm sure everyone else here would say the same, but. Very good. I, Thank any you. Other so thoughts, team? I um, just want to say that um, we're going to be sending out the recording of this to all of the people that are RSVP'd. And if it's okay, we'll include um, the emails of any recruiters that would like to be uh, connected with um, for, uh, for, uh, for the people that attended. So thank you so much for spending your Thursday lunchtime with us. We really appreciate the time and um, I really enjoyed hearing all about what it's like to work at Smartsheet and all the great opportunities that you have coming. So um, thank you, Chrissy, for organizing and leading. And thank you, everyone, for participating and, and giving our learners a really great, um, uh, really great insights today. Great. Thank Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs>